Hello everyone. Uh, in the today's lecture, we are going to cover the first unit of dams and hydraulic structure subject from uh, last year civil engineering. Uh, in this, we are going to cover first chapter that is introduction to the dams. So, in the today's presentation, we are going to cover uh, about what dams are, the uh, definition of dam, introductory part of the dam, the requirement of dam construction. Uh, we are going to see some history of dam and the present situation of dam. Some major dam construction over the world uh, that we are going to see. And uh, the factors affecting uh, uh, on the environment after construction of the dam that we are going to see. Then we are going to consider investigation of dam site. Uh, different types of or the classification of dam. Uh, so the uh, height of dam, criteria for selection of dam then uh, the concepts related to the construction of dam so we are going to see these particular parts uh, in the today's lecture so as we uh, know uh, the dams are massive barriers built across the river and streams to confine and utilize the flow of water for human purpose so as we know that uh, the rainy season is not available all over the year we required water sometimes in summer when there is no rainy season in India. So uh, what we have to do is uh, to avail the artificial amount, uh, large amount of water artificially. We have to uh, save the water and uh, store the water in a reservoir. And to construct the reservoir, what we do is uh, we construct the barrier across the flowing river or flowing uh, stream to confine and utilize the flow of water for human purpose. So these purposes can be something like irrigation for generation of power, hydropower and for supplying water in cities uh, and villages, then uh, for, for flood control also, then navigation purposes, then fishing and recreation purposes. So this uh, confinement of water creates lake or reservoir. So this is the main concept of dam. So these are some reasons listed here. Uh, reasons behind building a dam so dams have two main functions the first is to store water uh, and second is to raise the level of water at the upstream to enable the water to be diverted into canal or to increase the hydraulic head so in the first purpose what we have to do is uh, whenever the uh, fluctuations are there in river flow in that case the demand to cope up with the demand we have to store the water and we have to supply the water whenever it is required for uh, the water and energy purposes. So uh, in the second thing, second, uh, how it, uh, what is the function of dam? So the second to raise the level of water, uh, dub stream to enable the wat water to be diverted into the canal or to increase the hydraulic head. The difference in he uh, height between the surface of a reservoir and the river downstream. The uh, creation of storage and head allow dams to generate electricity that is hydropower uh, provides nearly a fifth of the world's electricity and they supply water for agriculture, industries and household purpose to control the flooding, to assist river navigation by providing regular flows and uh, drawing the rapids. Other reasons to build large dams include the reservoir fisheries and uh, the leisure activities such as boating etc so recreation uh, is covered in it so ultimately what we have known about this, these two particular slides are is a dam is a structure constructed across a river to store water in a reservoir on the upstream side and the stored amount of water is then utilized for water supply irrigation or generation of hydropower or navigation purpose and we are having two main purposes of it. So the first is safe retention and second is storage of water on the upstream side. So dams which are unique structures are constructed of various shapes and sizes by using various types of materials such as earth, rock, stone masonry or concrete. So they dem demonstrate the great complexity in their load response depending upon the hydrology and geologic conditions of the site. As failure of the dam may result in heavy loss of human life and property, it must be designed and constructed and maintained with utmost care. 
Therefore, the safety of dam is a first and foremost consideration in whole the design of it. Uh, the choice of dam of uh, is often governed by site uh, conditions and uh, the availability of the funds given by government. So this this is what we have to know in the introductory part of it. So we'll see some history of dam. So these are some ancient type of dams. The earliest known uh, dam is uh, a Java Dam. So Java Dam in Jordan. Uh, 100 kilometers northeast, the gravity dam, which is featured originally of 9 meter 30 feet and 1 meter wide. So, this is the image of it. So, these are some of the dams from Egypt and Yemen. So, these are the dams from India Kala, uh, Kala Nai Dam, and uh, some of from China. These are some uh, Roman engineering concepts, large dam structure, large reservoir dams, design used, embankment dams, masonry gravity dam, arch gravity dam, arch dams, buttress dam, multiple arch dam, uh, first to build dam bridges and uh, hydro power through water wheels, water supply. So these are some of the examples from Iran as well as Spain. In the early 19th century, there were uh, these type of dams. So the large dams uh, are generally, uh, the era of large dam was initiated with the construction of Aswan Low Dam in Egypt in 1902 by uh, British. When initially constructed between 1899 to 1902, uh, nothing of its scale had ever been attempted. So, uh, on completion, it was the largest masonry dam in the world. So, Aswan Dam is one of the largest masonry dam. Hoover Dam is also there. The Hoover Dam is a massive concrete arch gravity dam constructed in the Black Canyon of a uh, Colorado River on the border between the US state of uh, Arizona and uh, Nevada between 1931 to 1936. Such a large concrete structure had never been built before and some of the techniques were uh, unproven. So we'll come to the different termino terminologies used in the construction of dam. So here we have uh, like the different parts of dam are crest of it, parapet wall, hill, toe, spillways and abutments. The top of the dam, this may uh, in some cases be used for providing a roadway or walkway over the dam. Low protective walls on the either side of the roadway or uh, walkway on the crest. Then uh, the portion of dam, hill is nothing but the portion of dam in contact with ground or riverbed at the upstream side. And toe is a portion of dam in contact with ground or riverbed at the downstream side. Spillway is the arrangement made. Uh, it, it is kind of a passage near the top of dam for the passage of surplus or excessive water from the reservoir. And last uh, is abutment, that is a valley, slopes on the either side of the dam wall to which uh, the left and right end of the dam are fixed to. A gallery is uh, the level or the gently sloping tunnel like passage, the small room like space at the transverse or longitudinal, longitudinal within the dam with drain of drain on the floor for seepage water. Uh, these are generally pro provided uh, for having space for drilling grout holes and drainage holes. This may also be used to accommodate the instrumentation for studying the performance of dam. Sluiceway is an opening in the dam near the base of it provided to clear the silt accumulation in the reservoir. Freeboard. Freeboard uh, is a space between the highest level of uh, the water in the reservoir and the top of the dam. Then the dead storage level, level of permanent storage below which the water will not be withdrawn. Divergent tunnel is a tunnel constructed to divert or change the direction of water to bypass the dam construction site. The dam is built while the river flows through the divergent tunnel. So here are all the uh, parameters of dam which are shown in the figure. So this is the upstream side of dam. This is the downstream side of dam. We have seen the parapet wall. This is the maximum water level. So here we have normal water level. So this much is a free board. Uh, the distance between parapet wall and normal water level. 
so this is gallery hill and toe here is the sluice way and the crest spillway is here so the types of dams are something like arch dam gravity dam uh, so it is classified based on its structure based on its use based on its material and the other types so we have uh, the classification which is based on the structure like arch dam gravity dam buttress dam arch gravity dam barrages embankment dam rock fill dam and concrete faced rock fill dam earth fill dam and by its use it is uh, saddle dam weir check dam drive dam dive, uh, diversionary dam underground dam and tailing dam by its material it can be classified as concrete dam steel dam and timber dam or it can be a uh, rubble masonry dam also so other types of dam are a cover dam natural dam beaver dams so first part we can see here that is arch dam an arch dam is a solid dam made of bedrock of the surrounding area that is curved upstream in the plan you can see that in figure and the arch dam is designed so that the force of water against it known as hydrostatic pressure presses against the arch and compressing and strengthening the structure as it pushes into the foundation or the bed means so an arch dam is most suitable for narrow gorges or the canals with slip walls and the stable rock to support the structure and stresses since they are thinner than any other type of dam they require much less construction material making them economical practical in remote areas gravity dam a gravity dam is a dam constructed from concrete or stone masonry and designed to hold back water by primarily utilizing the weight of the material alone to resist the horizontal pressure of water pushing against it gravity dam are designed so that each section of dam is stable independent of any other dam section most gravity dams are straight some masonry and concrete gravity dams have the dam axis curved in uh, curved to add the stability through the arch section so what is the major difference between gravity dam and arch dam gravity dam balances all the external forces which are coming on it by its own weight self weight of it under gravity whereas in case of arch dam partially all the external forces partially being balanced by its by gravity action and partially being balanced by arch action that we have seen until now in these two types the third type is a buttress type of dam or the hollow dam is basically a derivation of a gravity dam with the instruct uh, with the introduction of intermediate space with a buttress dam the face of dam is held by a series of supports of buttress that are placed at intervals on the downstream side the buttress work to combat uh, the force of reservoir water from uh, trying to push the dam over the forces or the laws of physics working against a buttress dam are exactly the same as those that act on a gravity dam except the vertical load presented by the water on a buttress dam is greater the advantage of a buttress dam is that typically requires less concrete to construct than a gravity dam the form work and the reinforced steel used in a building uh, of buttress is expensive however and uh, will ultimately offset any cost which is saved so another type of dam is a combination of arch and gravity dams so it is arch gravity dams a gravity dam can be com combined with an arch dam into a arch gravity for areas with massive amounts of water flow but less material available for a purely gravity dam the inward compression of the dam uh by the water reduces the lateral that is horizontal force acting on the dam thus the gravitational force required by the dam is lessened that is the dam does not need to be massive this enables uh, thinner dams and saves the resources barrages a special kind of dam which consists of line of large gates that can be opened or closed to control the amount of water passing of them <coughs> the gate are uh, set between the flanking piers which are responsible for supporting the water load and are often used 
to control and stabilize the water flow for the irrigation system. Embankment dams. They are uh, massive dam structures which are made up of earth or the rock material. So, like gravity dams, embankment dams rely on their heavy weight to resist all the external forces coming on it. But embankment dams are also armed with dense waterproof core that prevents water from seeping through its structure. Embankment dams are of the of two types that is rock fill and earth fill dam. So the earth fill and the rock fill dam, the major difference in between them are listed over here. Earth fill dam is also called as earth dam or embankment dam, whereas rock fill dams are the embankment dams of compacted free draining granular earth, which is an impervious zone. So dam uh, in case of earth dam, dam built by and compacting uh, successive layers of earth using the most impervious material to form a core and placing more permeable substances on the upstream and the downstream sides. In case of rock fill dam, the earth utilized which often contains a high percentage of large particles hence it is termed as rock fill dam. In case of earth fill dam, a facing of crushed stone prevents erosion by wind or rain and an ample spillway usually of concrete protects against the catastrophic washouts should the uh, water overtop the dams. So in case of rock fill dam, the impervious zone may be on the upstream face and may, made up of masonry concrete. So the plastic membrane, steel sheet piles and timber or the other material. So there are two diagrams which are shown over here earth fill dam and rock fill dam. So the another type of dam we have is a concrete phase rock fill dam that is CFRD. The concrete phase rock fill dam that is CFRD is a rock fill dam with concrete slabs on its upstream face. This design provides the concrete slabs as an impervious wall to prevent the leakage and also is structured without concern to uplift the pressure. In addition, the CFRD design is flexible for topography faster to construct and less costly than the earth fill dams. Saddle dam and the weir. Saddle dam is usually subsidiary dam of any type of constructed across a saddle or low point on a perimeter of reservoir. A weir overflow dam is a type of small overflow dam that is often used within a river channel to create uh, an impoundment like for uh, the water abstract abstraction purposes and which can also be used for the flow measurement or the retardation. Next is check dam and a dry dam. A check dam is a small dam designed to reduce flow velocity and the control soil in the region. Next, a dry dam also known as flood retarding structure is a dam uh, designed to control the flooding. It normally holds back no water and uh, allows, the, allows the channel to flow freely except, except during the uh, periods of intense flow uh, that would otherwise cause flooding at downstream side. Then uh, diversionary dam and underground dams. Here is a, a diversionary dam is a structure designed to divert all or a part uh, portion of a flow of a river from its natural course, the water may be redirected into a canal or tunnel for irrigation and or, uh, or hydroelectric power production. Underground dams are uh, used to trap the groundwater and store all or most of it below the surface for extended use in a localized area. In some cases, they are also built to prevent the salt, uh, salt water from the in from the intruding into the freshwater aquifer. The underground dams are typically constructed in areas where water resources are minimal and need to be uh, efficiently stored such as in the deserts and in isla Icelands. Tailings dams. So these are some examples of other dams that is steel dam and timber dam. These are separated by its material only. So this is a cover dam and a natural dam. A coffer dam, also called as a coffer, is a temporary or in, uh, temporary enclosure built within or in pairs across a body of water and constructed to allow the enclosed area to be pumped out. So, such structures are typically 
uh, dismantled after the ultimate work is completed. Whereas in case of natural dams, dams can be created by natural geological forces. So the natural disasters such as earthquakes and landslides frequently creates landslides dams in the mountain regions. So the natural dams often pose significant hazards to the human settlement and infrastructure. So this is the very first type of dam from where the dam actually originated. So the beavers the are the one who created the dam. Beavers creates dam uh, primarily out of mud and the sticks to flood uh, a particular habitab habitable area. By flooding a parcel of land, beavers can navigate below or near the surface and remain relatively well hidden or protected from the uh, predators. The flooded region also allows beavers to access to uh, food and especially during the winter. So another is a power generation plant. Hydropower is a leading renewable, renewable source for electricity generation globally. So supplying 70% of all the renewable energy at the end of 2015. Undeveloped potential is approximately 10,000. So this is the global hydropower plants here. So here we have another is uh, the hydroelectric dams. So this is how hydroelectric dams works. Uh, reservoir will uh, supply the water through intake, through penstock. It will go towards turbine. It will impact on turbine and it will generate the energy. So powerhouse is provided over here. And after using the water outlet will be flown to the river. So the spillway is, is spillway is a section of dam uh, of a dam designed to pass water from the upstream side of dam to the downstream side. Many spillways have foot, gra foot gates designed to control the flow through the spillway. So three gorges dam in China. So this is an example of hydroelectric dam. Uh, it's the world's largest power station installed by capacity uh, 22,500 million watts. Itepu dams in Brazil. So factors which are affecting on selection type of the dam. Topography, the geology and the foundation conditions, then uh, availability of material, spillway size and location, earthquake zone, height of the dam, other factors such as the cost of the construction and maintenance, life of the dam and aesthetics of it. Selection of dam site. Suitable foundation must be available for economy. The length of the dam dam should be as small as possible and for a given height it should store the maximum volume of water. The general bed level at the dam site should preferably be higher than that of the river basin. This will reduce the height of dam. A suitable site for the spillway should be available in the near vicinity. Materials required for the construction of dam should be easily available either locally or near the vicinity of it. The value of the land and property uh, submerged by the proposed dam should be as low as possible. The dam site should be easily access accessible so that it can be economically connected to important towns and city. Site for establishing labor colonies and the healthy environment should be available near the site. Advantages of dam Clean, efficient and a reliable form of energy can be generated. Then it does not emit any direct pollutants or greenhouse gases. While the initial cost is high, they are very inexpensive to operate. Electric, uh, electricity generated by hydroelectric power plant is the cheapest electricity which is generated. Dams prevents floods. Dams stores water for the irrigation in summer season and dry months. Many desert areas can now farm due to the dams and canals that, is, that are supplying artificial water. Dams supply water for local for drinking purposes uh, also. It allows for fishing and farming. So there are uh, some negative impacts of dam as well. So the negative impacts are something like in flat basins, large dams cause flooding of large tracts of the land which destroys the local animals and habitats. People have to be displaced causing change in the lifestyle and the customs. 
even causing emotional scars, scarring. About 40 to 80 million people have been displaced physically by dams worldwide. Large amount of plant life are submerged and the decay anaerobically in the absence of oxygen, generating greenhouse gases like methane. It is estimated that the hydroelectric power plant produces 3.5 times of amount of greenhouse gases as compared to the thermal power plant uh, using burning fossil fuels. The migratory um, pattern of river and anim uh, river animals like uh, the salmon and the trout are affected. Dam rustic sediments that are responsible for the fertile lands at the downstream side of it. Farmers use chemical fertilizers and pesticides to compensate for the loss of productivity. The salt water intrusion into the delay deltas means uh, that the saline water cannot be used for irrigation. Large dams are breeding ground for the mosquitoes and the cause of spread of disease. Farmer downstream, farmers at the downstream who used to wait for the flooding of the field. Uh, to plant their seeds uh, are getting affected. The dams serve as a heat sink and the water is hotter than the normal river water. This warm water when released into the river downstream can affect the animal life. Peak power operations can change the water level 30 to 40 feet in one day, uh, one day and it can kill the animals staying at the shoreline. shorelines. Around uh, 4 lakh kilometers square of the land worldwide has been submerged due to the construction of dam. There are some uh, solutions for some specific problems. The negative effects of flora and fauna and the local population can be reduced by following methods. Fish passages should be created to uh, aid the migration of fish. New dam sites should be chosen with the environment impact in mind. Local people should be led into confidence and must be suitably resettled. Proper compensation as per the market rate should be given. Religious monuments of historic significance should be shifted. Endangered sp uh, spices, species uh, can be relocated. If the political uh, will to change and uh, do a good job, is there a dam uh, can be constructed in a way to minimize its effect on people and the environment so the conclusion of this chapter we can say dam have made an important and significant contribution to human development and the benefits derived from uh, them have been considerable dam building has been one of the most disputed topics affecting the environment today the push and pull between the pros and cons have created conflicts among the different groups while dams destroy the nature and people surrounding the area in which they are built. They do provide people with water and the products from the water. The solutions are minimal, but the damages could be decreased depending upon the placement of the dam. So this was all for the today's chapter. Thank you. So we'll just summarize what we have seen in uh, the this lecture. From the start, we have seen uh, the introduction of dam, we've seen uh, the the functions of the dam. Then we have seen history of dam, and then we have seen the classification of dam, basically as a large dam and 